and uh, Angela is going to begin this morning with our prelude.
Thank you, Angela. And good morning again for those who are joining us by way of Zoom and Facebook Live as we gather together at the Emanuel Lutheran Church, uh, worshiping together even though we are apart. Um, for those who are on Facebook Live, uh, please uh, hit the comments. And if you have any prayer concerns, please list those there. Any of you on Zoom can go to the chat and put prayer concerns in there this morning. I know we have lots of prayer concerns that are out there, as we have heard of those at the uh, Genocross facility that have the coronavirus there in Napoleon. Uh, we also know we have some other Lutheran homes, uh, uh, the Williston home that has a cottage with coronavirus. So. Some of our Lutheran homes are struggling now with the virus. So we ask that you keep them in your prayers. And if you have other prayer concerns, uh, please add those uh, to the comments or the chat. We begin this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this fountain, for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We turn to our first lesson this morning from Acts, and Mel has that this morning. First reading is from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and extorted them, saying, Save yourself from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed this message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Thank you, Mel. We turn to our psalm, uh, it's Psalm 116 today. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me. to me whenever I call. The cords of death entangle me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord I pray you save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. 
I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Our second reading today comes from the first chapter of First Peter. If you invoke as father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. Reading of the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And dear friends, this is a familiar story and one that has some link to it. And I'm going to invite you to do something um, you might not typically do, which is just close your eyes and listen again. Now on that day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, what things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped but he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astonished us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? 
then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Here ends our gospel reading. Praise to you, O Christ. Will you continue to bow your heads? And pray with me. In Christ on the cross, you claimed us as your people. And in the empty tomb, you gave all creation the promise of new life. May your gospel here proclaimed write this truth on our hearts. And may it bring us peace in the name of the one who greets us. Peace be with you. Amen. So, another week separate from each other. Most of us, I think, have been touched by a little or maybe a lot of turmoil these days. Some of it is pretty much internal. It's anxiety over well-being of family members. I know these stories about uh, the two Lutheran homes that have the virus have distressed me. Um, there's a sense of a loss of control these days. And maybe even if I'm really honest, as I'm alone here at home with my husband, I'm kind of a sense of boredom with myself. Um, but that's the internal stuff. There's external turmoil, too. There, a lot of frustration as I talk with family and friends, or even a little bit of fury over any of the news that has to do with this COVID crisis. Um, I do talk on the phone quite a bit, and more than one person has told me that they've not been sleeping very well at all. Uh, in fact, I hear there's a phenomena called COVID dreams, and I too have been having some rather vivid dreams. I'm going to tell you about one which probably exposes exactly how I feel right now. Um, in, in this dream, I was back in school, elementary school, I suppose, taking one of those matching vocabulary tests. Do you, do you remember them? There were two lines, two columns on the piece of paper. One had vocabulary words you were supposed to know, and the other had all the definitions. And you took the test by drawing a line between those columns. Remember those? Yeah. I. I always started those tests with great confidence. But toward the end, it seems like there were always a couple words left over that I absolutely did not know, and they did not match up with any of the definitions that I had left. And so I'd start to suck and guess what I thought I already knew. And, and then there'd be a little bit of panic because the teacher was calling time, and I'd be erasing like crazy. That's how I feel right now. How about you? Kind of unsettled, in turmoil, right? I kind of think that these two disciples we heard about on the road to Emmaus felt that same way, unsettled. Uh, apparently, they're part of the extended group of Jesus' disciples. The number 70, if you listened in that story, rings a bell, doesn't it? Jesus sent out 70 of his extended group of disciples to preach the gospel, to heal, to be with people. That's in Luke 10, if you want to go back and read that story. 
those disciples thought that they understood the way things were going to turn out when the promised Messiah came as prophesied. Their presumption was that a Messiah would save them by divine might or more likely political power. It would be the end of Roman rule and the beginning of redemption. God's kingdom would be centered in Jerusalem, of course, and as Jesus had ridden into that city not so long ago, the cries of Hosanna, meaning save us, had seemed to be the beginning of the end of the oppression and depression of God's people. The healings, all those feedings, the way Jesus touched people in love, the way he taught forgiveness, all those things had been pointers to a glorious fulfillment of God's plan. But now, the most recent event on that eve of the Passover had them questioning the definition they thought they knew questioning if they had been wrong about if Jesus was the one. After all, dead was dead until that final day of judgment, right? Could it be possible that he was alive? Should they wait for him? Or maybe look for another Messiah? What they thought they knew did Matt not match up with the reality of that walk home. Turmoil, a disruption of how we understand things will be. The women at the tomb, the frightened disciples, these two travelers were all being interrupted in their presumptions those presumptions that were keeping them from seeing an alternate end of the story. Just like we talked about before, how difficult that empty tomb was for even Jesus' closest disciples, Mary Magdalene, to understand this ending was not as they thought it was going to be. They had expected a Messiah who entered as a conquering king, not as one who stepped out of an empty tomb. And so as we listened in, as these two men journeyed along intent on discussing how things had fallen apart, they were so absorbed that they did not recognize Jesus as the man walking with them or as the promised Messiah, nor did they understand or recognize that real redemption had come to them. That made me think this week, to wonder about the expectations and presumptions that are right now being set aside in our lives and maybe in the life of the congregation. What did we hold as sure that is being overturned in this turmoil? I know the future doesn't seem real certain right now. It, certainly it's not what we expected to be looking forward to. This week's news is confusing and upsetting. There are protests in this country about quarantine versus individual rights. It's hard to understand. There are stories about meat plants where the food we are told is safe, but the workers are ill. And that scares us about the supply of our food chain. There is debate at whether we are at the peak of the pandemic or past it and ready to open back up. We all know when we're gonna get back into our church building or when we can be with family and friends. And I am desperate at this point to hold my grandchildren. Right now, nothing fits my understanding of what is normal. It is like our life is being buried. And I had a bunch of phone calls this week while I was trying to make the early week deadline for 
uh, writing this message so it could be in the mailed out bulletin. Absolutely everybody who called me apologized for interrupting me, though I really didn't mind because I was struggling. I was just going around and round in my head trying to make sense of it. And so having a little bit of a break meant that I could come back to the message and do a lot of erasing. And in the midst of all those interruptions, the light bulb went on. Sometimes it seems it takes a little turmoil to realize that we didn't have it right in the first place. And that, dear friends, can be a very good thing because when we know that we don't have it right is exactly when we can best trust in God as the one who does. I am really intrigued as a teacher by the way Jesus taught these two on the road. They obviously knew the scriptures. You know this story. That's why I asked you to close your eyes this morning and just listen along. Because they were like we are. We've heard these stories so many times that we miss the wonder and the awe and the great upheaval, the turmoil of having not just a savior, but a risen savior, a lamb standing as if slain. I love that phrase from Revelation 5, 6. You'll remember back in December in Advent, we sang, the world is about to turn, and that is exactly what Christ on the cross accomplished, a turning, a metanoia of the world. Right now, we might feel like life is a bit of a mess, and it is exactly then that we can recognize that a risen Savior's presence and his presence only brings peace and promise for a new life. As St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, another passage you know well, even though once we knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, if you know Christ, if there is faith that there is one beyond us, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. And yes, my friends, I think that means all of our old expectations for this world and even this church have passed away. From turmoil comes new perspective and new life. And so I have a prayer for us this week, myself included, that God will interrupt us on our road. Now, it might be as you see him in the stories of scripture, as you read your Bible each day, and I encourage you to do that. Maybe it's going to be as you were invited into somebody's life or somebody's need as they ask you to pray with them. You might notice him in the simple act of fellowship, uh, maybe our, our Zoom study on Thursdays or during this time of worship, which by the way, you can watch more than once. Not a bad thing. I don't know where you will encounter the risen Christ, but this I do know. In these resurrection days, we are assured that we do not walk alone nor do we walk to our own destination. We have a God, a triune God, a creator God, a redeeming son, a comforting spirit, who are one in blessing us by breaking our limited understanding and matching us perfectly with his plan. We claim and proclaim that because we are the witnesses. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. The music for today is an African-American spiritual first transcribed in the early 19th century. On the flugelhorn, I want Jesus to walk with me. Thank uh -huh.
Okay, guys, it's time for the kids to come around. Can we have all the kids who are gathering? Hi, I hope you're having fun with all the papers that I'm sending you. Did you know that I'm coloring the pages too? <laughs> I have a question for you this morning. Have you ever had your eyes checked out at the eye doctor? I remember when I was about your age. I was having trouble seeing things clearly. They were blurry and I couldn't read the stuff that my teacher was writing on the board in our classroom. When I got my glasses, things were good again. I could read the math problems on the board. I could read my books without, getting my, without my eyes getting so tired. <laughs> I was thinking about that when I read the lesson for today. Sometimes we don't see correctly because we need glasses. Sometimes our eyes have something in them. Sometimes our eyes are just tired and we need some sleep. Well, if you remember, we celebrated Easter a couple weeks ago. Easter is the day that we celebrate the fact that Jesus rose from the grave and he was alive again. Did you know that Jesus did not immediately return to heaven to be with God? He was concerned about his followers and he wanted to show them that he was alive. Therefore, instead of returning to heaven, he stayed on earth for 40 days after his resurrection. In today's lesson, we heard about two men who knew Jesus. One of those men was named Cleopas. Isn't that a funny name? <laughs> Cleopas and his friend were walking to a town called Emmaus. They were walking along and probably feeling pretty dis disappointed and maybe a little confused. They knew that Jesus had been crucified. They had also heard that his tomb was empty and that some people were saying that Jesus was alive again. Pretty confusing, right? They'd never heard of that happening before. As they were walking, Jesus, Jesus came up to them, but for some reason they didn't know it was him. We don't know why they did not recognize their friend, but they didn't. Do you think Jesus wore a mask so people wouldn't know him? Wouldn't they recognize his voice? We don't know how this took place. But as they're walking, Jesus is explaining the Bible to them. He explains to them why he had to suffer and die on the cross. He tells them that Jesus was alive. Remember, they still don't know that they're actually talking to Jesus. So he's talking to, about, to them about himself, but they don't know that. Once they get to the town, it is late. Jesus shares a meal with them. As they were eating, they suddenly recognized Jesus. They were so excited. Suddenly, Jesus disappeared. Have you ever done something really fun and you couldn't wait to tell somebody about it? That's what happened here. These two men ran and told their friends that Jesus was alive and they had seen him. You know, kids, sometimes things don't make sense to us, like this coronavirus. We don't understand why it's happening. Some things that happen to us can't be understood or explained until we get older. But there is something that we can understand. We know that God is working. He promises us that he is always working for the good of those who love him. Like these men, we don't always recognize what he is doing. But God gave us the Bible to help us to see and understand him. Everybody, fold, let's fold your hands. Dear Jesus, help us to see you. Sometimes we don't understand or recognize you. Thank you for giving us the adults in our lives to help us understand and see you. Keep us safe this week as we continue to look to you. Amen. Well, kids, keep doing those papers. I'll keep sending them to you. Bye. Well, thank you, uh, Denise, Beth, and Tom. Uh, appreciate all the special music and the children's message here today. Uh, it's, it's nice to see more of us participating in our manual worship. Uh, makes us feel like we're more of a congregation as we're all come together here. And we come together now in sharing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We turn to our uh, prayers for the day and uh, certainly uh, want to keep those folks in our Lutheran homes uh, in our prayers, um, especially those in Napoleon and uh, Williston. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For those whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel, that they are empowered to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to this love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For the diverse natural world, for jungles and prairies, forests, valleys, mountains, and for all the wild and endangered animals who call these spaces home, that they are nurtured and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For broken systems we have inherited and that we continue to perpetuate, forgive us. Restrain the nations from fighting over limited resources. Redeem us from the cycles of scarcity and violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. For all who call upon your healing name, give rest. Stay with us and walk with all those who are hungry, friendless, despairing, or fighting this coronavirus, desiring healing in body and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For the faith-forming ministries of this church, for those who are soon to be baptized, and for all our members, uh, wherever they might be, and especially uh, this day, we pray for all of our Lutheran brothers and sisters, the Lutheran Home of Mercy and, and Jenna Cross, that you would be with them and protect them and help them each step along the way. Inspire us all of every age and ability that we might be about your work, Lord, showing your kindness and mercy. Continue to help us to grow in faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, even as we look forward to the hope of the new life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray this day, too, for Rick Ford, who has been in the ICU unit in the hospital and uh, was hoping to return home yesterday, uh, but yet the news that he has received is not good. So we ask that you would pray for him, that he might experience God's comfort and peace in the midst of a difficult time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, prayer. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray in your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A couple of announcements this morning. I certainly want to take the opportunity to 
to thank all of those who have joined us this morning in, in worship, uh, Angela and, and Janine and Mel, and Tom and, and Beth and Denise. Uh, how wonderful that you were all able to participate this morning and it's greatly appreciated. And uh, your family at Emmanuel loves you and uh, what a wonderful opportunity to come together. So thank you for all of your efforts this morning to make our worship special. And we talk about our virtual offerings and remind people to give their offerings, but at the same time, um, I wanna say that we need, to, we need to use sort of that airplane uh, thought that, uh, that when those oxygen masks come down, we need to put them on ourselves and then we need to take care of others. So uh, I certainly want people at home in light of all the difficulties that we're going through to make sure that they're taken care of. And if those of you who find, well, I, that you have what you need, then you would consider um, helping out the church and others who are in need with your offerings. So we pray that uh, our needs be met and God has been faithful and continues to provide for us his blessings. So God indeed does it take care of us and make sure that uh, you take care of yourself with God's help. Also, uh, for those of you that may not have gotten the uh, bulletin downloaded or had the opportunity to look at it, just remind you that your church council is busy working and actually seems like meeting more often now than they were before uh, every couple of weeks. So we meet again on, on May 4th to talk about uh, our next step in this uh, whole process of trying to figure out how we're going to reopen. But it looks like for the moment we are going to be online uh, for a while yet. So bear with us as we continue to worship here. Also uh, share with you that the call committee has uh, been busy uh, interviewing a couple of candidates by Zoom. And we ask that you remember the call committee members uh, in your prayers as they uh, discern uh, a selection of a candidate that would be a pastor for the future of Emmanuel Lutheran Church. So uh, please uh, remember them as well. Now we remind you also, you know, the peace of the Lord be with you. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.